Let's solve sample problems involving your collisions. For the first problem, we have here a collision in a horizontal plane. The figure shows two battling robots and a frictionless surface. Robot A, with mass 20 kg, initially moves at 2 meters per second parallel to the x-axis. It collides with robot B, which has a mass 12 kg and is initially at rest. After a collision, robot A moves at 1 meters per second in a direction that makes an angle alpha that is equal to 30 degrees with its initial direction. What is the final velocity of robot B? So this is an example of, a, of an elastic collision which is non-head-on. Again, let's repeat the problem. The figure shows two battling robots in a frictionless surface. Robot A with mass of 20 kg initially moves at 2 meters per second parallel to the x-axis. It collides with robot B which has a mass of 12 kg and is initially at rest. After collision, robot A moves at 1 meter per second in a direction that makes an angle of alpha equal to 30 degrees with its initial direction. What is the final velocity of robot B? So let's carefully analyze the problem. So you have two battling robots, uh, robot A and robot B. Robot A moves at a velocity of one, uh, sorry, robot A moves at a velocity of two meters per second parallel to the x-axis. So you have B1A for robot A at two meters per second. Robot uh, B is initially at rest. So you have the velocity of robot B. Uh, let's call this one as your robot B1. Oh, let's change the, the symbol for this one. Let's call this one as your uh, BA1. So when we're going to refer to one, we mean here before collision. And when we are going to talk about the two, event two, that is your after collision. Of course, you can still use a different symbol. Like say, for example, you can use the prime for your after collision, or you can just use two. It depends on you. So you have BA1 is equal to two meters, the velocity of robot A before collision, and the velocity of robot B, BV1, which is equal to zero because your robot B is initially at rest. Now your robot A moves at the velocity of two meters per second going to your uh, robot B, which is at rest. After collision, robot A moves at one meter per second in the direction that makes an angle 30 degrees. So it moves here, your robot A, at an angle of 30 degrees. Now this velocity here is your VA2. Again, when we say 2, this, these are events that happen after collision. So your VA2 is equal to, you have 1 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees. And again, these are vector quantities. The question is, what is the final velocity of robot B? So you are asked here of your velocity PV2 or your robot B. This is a non head on collision, a non head on elastic collision. So, if you can remember the previous uh, examples on your uh, the types of your collisions, you'll know that robot B will move uh, below, below the x axis at some angle uh, beta here. So, let's solve the problem. So again, we're given with uh, we're given with the following. So for uh, robot A, so these are our givens. Robot A has a mass of twenty kilograms. You have your V A one of two meters per second. 
and then Robert B has a mass of 12 kilograms this are before collision and then you have your V uh, your VB1 for Robert B equal to zero because it is at rest after collision your robot A now moves at the velocity your V A2 of 1 meter per second at alpha which is equal to 30 degrees now since this is a two-dimensional problem we are going to use or we're going to solve the problem using its x and y components so solving this one let's uh, solve first the uh, horizontal momentum so you have your P system is equal to or your P system 1 is equal to your P system 2 so again you can use uh, different symbols I, as I've said you can use your just your P system and then you equate that one to your P system prime or you can use your 1 and 2 to signify events that happened before and after your collision so along the x-axis we have uh, we have this uh, we have two bodies so we have your MA PA1 X plus your MB vv 2 x so when you have uh, let's say for example when you have five robots there you should have five terms of this one but since we have just two robots so we just have two terms and this is equal to your m a b a 2 x after collision plus your m b b v 2 x initially your uh, your robot uh, B sorry the, uh, there's a mistake here uh, this is B1X so this is a little bit uh, of, a, of a tricky part here your writing of your of your subscripts so let us check again you have your MABA1X plus MVB b1x before collision that is equal to your maba2x plus mbbb2x after the after collision events okay but initially this one here is zero because you have uh, zero velocity and our target is we want to solve for our target is your uh, vv2 your velocity after your collision so this case here this is our target here your vv2x the x component of that velocity so let's play with your equation you have ma b a 1x minus m a b a 2x this is equal to m b b v 2x our target again is your vv2x so your vv 2x is just equal to your ma uh, ba 1x minus your ma ba 2x divided by your mb and you'll find that your uh, vv 2x is equal to 1.89 uh, meters per second or you have 1.9 meters per second okay since we have two significant figures so you have 1.9 meters per second okay so we now have your vv2x next we need to find your vv2y Next, we solve for your VV2Y. So let's solve for the Y components of your momentum. So we still have again your, we just have again your uh, your P system 1 is equal to your P system 2. 
let's write here your y components to tell us that uh, we are now solving the the y components okay so you have again two robot robots so two terms one for each robot so you have m a v a one y plus m b b v one y this is equal to m a v a two y minus m b b v two y so before collision and after your after collisions but if you can remember the velocity of your of your robot a is just along the x-axis so this is just your v a uh, one x and your v a one y is equal to zero because again it's just move it just moves along the x-axis and your robot b has a velocity to your v v uh, sorry your your robot b your has a velocity of zero so this one is just zero and then this is also also zero and our target is to solve for your vv 2y so this term here okay so to play, uh, let's play with the equation so this just becomes your ma va 2y and this is equal to your mv vv 2y you want to take out your vv 2y so you have your vv 2y is equal to your ma va 2y divided by your um, your mv just remember again that your um, I forgot to, uh, to emphasize this one in the previous solution. Just remember again that your uh, your V1, your uh, your sorry uh, your VA2, which is equal to one meter per second, is a vector quantity at alpha 30 degrees. So you need to resolve this one to get your uh, to get your VA2x and then to get for your V A two Y. Okay. So if you get these values already, you substitute this one to your V A two Y and then you will get uh, you will get the value of your of your V V two Y which is equal to a negative zero point eighty three meters per second. So negative, as you can see, because your robot B it moves downwards. Okay, so it should have a negative uh, y component of the velocity and a positive component of your x velocity. So we now have your uh, your two velocities. So again, the first is 1.9 meters per second on the x, and then uh, the second you have your BV2y is equal to negative 0.83 meters per second but again our target is your vv2 your velocity 2 so how do we solve for that one by the way um, i did not anymore filled up this one with the constants you have to verify it yourselves if indeed that uh, these are the true answers if these are not the right answers please comment on the video below below and tell me that the answers were not uh, were not right, but these are the answers. So let's solve for your VV two. Again, you have your uh, VV two x, which is equal to one point nine meters per second, and then your VV two y is equal to uh, negative zero point eighty three meters per second to get for your vv2 magnitude this is just from your pythagorean theorem so so we get the square of vv2x plus the square of your vv2y square in solving for that one your uh, vv2 
let me use my calculator. So you have 1.9 squared plus negative 0 0.83 squared. And then we get the square root. So you will get uh, the magnitude of your VV2, which is equal to 2.1 meters per second. And we also need, need to get your beta, the angle. This is just from your tangent inverse of your VV to Y over your VV to X. So here, your beta is equal to negative 24 degrees. Because again, it is measured from the positive x-axis and it is in the fourth quadrant. So these are your final answers. Please try to solve the problem you, uh, yourself. Uh, please verify it. Substitute it with the values. Since I just I have just given the, uh, the final answers directly. So that you have something to work out on yourselves. So let's have another example. So let's have another example. This is a complete inelastic collision. Two gliders with different mass are moving towards each other as shown in the figure. The gliders are equipped so that they stick together after collision. Find their velocity after their collision. Again, two gliders with different mass are moving towards each other as shown in the figure. The gliders are equipped so that they stick together after collision. Find your velocity after the collision. So we have this important hint here. The gliders are equipped so that they stick together after collision. So they, uh, this statement here says that uh, this is an example of a perfectly inelastic collision. Okay. So after they collide, they stick together and then they move together as one. So this is the problem. So your uh, mass A is 0 0.50 kilograms. Your mass B is 0 0.30 kilograms. BA1X is 2 meters per second. BV1X is equal to negative 2 meters per second. Our target is to solve for uh, V2X. And this is just a one-dimensional problem. So let's, uh, let's solve this one. So let's solve the problem just from your law of conservation of momentum, your P system 1 before collision should be the same with your P system 2 after collision, meaning your momentum before collision should remain the same after your collision. And since this is just a one-dimensional problem, so we only have along the x-axis, so and we have two bodies, so we have two terms, one for each body. So you have your MA, VA1, X, plus MB, VV1, X, before collision. And then you have MA, VA2, X, after collision, plus MB, VV2, X, after your collision. But it was stated in the problem that the two masses masses stick together after collision and they move at the same velocity. So since they are going to move at the same velocity, that means your VA2Y is equal to your VA or is equal to your VB 2Y. And let's just call this one as your V to ah sorry why are we going I'm referring to y sorry this uh there's a mistake so we're referring to the x so this uh your va 2 x is equal to your vv 2 x and let's just call this one as your v 2 x okay so if that is the case your equation becomes your va 1 x plus mvvv 1x is equal to ma b 2x plus mb b 2x and we can take out your b2x out of the equation since uh, they are just equal so we have ma b a 1x plus mb bb 
1x is equal to your ma plus mb is equal to your v2x. Our target here is your v2x. This is what usually happens with your um, with your perfectly inelastic collision. So your two masses combine and they move at the same velocity. So our target is your uh, v2x. So your your v2x then is just equal to your mava1x plus mvvv1x divided by your ma plus your mb. And you can solve this one. You'll get a value of equal to 0 0.24 meters per second. Please verify the answer if it is the right one. If I've written the, the right one. And if not, just comment on the video below to tell me that the answer was wrong. Okay, so that's it. So let's have one last example. This is an automobile, automobile uh, collision. A 1,000 kg car traveling north at 15 meters per second collides with a 2,000 kg truck traveling east at 10 meters per second. The occupants wearing seat belts are uninjured, but the two vehicles move away from the impact point as one. The insurance adjuster asks you to find the velocity of the wreckage just after the impact. What is your answer? So again, you have a one kilogram car traveling north at 15 meters per second. It collides with a 2,000 kilogram truck traveling east at 10 meters per second. The occupants wearing seat belts are uninjured, but the two vehicles move away from the impact point as one. The insurance, adjust, the insurance adjuster asks you to find the velocity of the wreckage just after the impact. What is your answer? So, uh, looking at the situation, you already know that this one is a perfectly inelastic situation. Okay, but this is not anymore a one-dimensional problem because you both have your x and y components of your velocity here. So, this is just easy. Let's solve this one. So, uh, Again, you just have your P system 1 is equal to your P system 2. Your 1 again signifies your before collision, and then your 2 signifies your after collision. And this is a perfectly inelastic situation. So along the X components, you have your, your MA, BA, 1X plus your mv vv 1x is equal to you have your ma plus your mb v 2x the x component of your of your velocity so you are actually asked for our target here is the uh, velocity of the wreckage, your V2. Okay, so let's call your uh, let's call your car to be your mass A, and then let's call your truck to be your mass uh, your mass B, and your V2 X is just your M A V A one X plus M B B V one X over your M A plus your M B. Okay, and since your uh, your car A has V A one X equal to zero because it moves only it moves to the north and it does not have a an X axis. So this is just zero here, and you can solve for V2x, which is equal to, uh, you have 6.67 meters per second. 
Now our next target is to solve for your v to y. So for the y components, you have mabay1y plus mvbb1y before collision, and then you have ma plus mb b 2 y Your target again is your B2Y. So we have MABA1Y plus MBBB2Y over MA plus MB. And you can get an answer of equal to 5, uh, this around 5 meters per second. Here, your truck a zero, uh, sorry, this is one. Uh, this is one here, my mistake. So MVBV1, why? And that is a zero because your track moves along the x-axis to the east. It has no velocity on the y. And you get an answer of five meters per second. Now to, to find for the velocity of the wreckage, just this is just from your Pythagorean theorem. So your V2. The magnitude of your V2 is from your V2 x squared plus your V2 y squared. And you get an answer of equal to 8.34 meters per second. You can get the data for yourselves. So that ends our lesson on lesson 8 of the course in mechanics. In this lesson, we've learned about your concepts of impulse, momentum, and collisions. And we have some examples of uh, solving problems involving the conservation of, of momentum. I hope you learned something from this lesson. Live long and prosper.